All right, so here's both dashes. Um, I actually bought a 2005 Legacy GT as a donor car. Um, as you can tell, that's my dash from the Gremlins and shoot on it. Uh, I had to switch it to the airbag. I don't know if they're different or not, but I'm not going through the hassle of it. It was a couple of clips. Um, I had to change this bracket out because the older Legacies have a different bracket. And I had to switch this out, which is the keyless entry module. Um, so I'm going to try to set this up somewhere and show you how to get it back in, but it's really not that hard. There's a couple places where the wiring harness has to connect to the metal skeleton of the dash. Like this is one of them you'll have, uh, up in here, it will have to connect to the dash. That's for your, your clock and your trip. And then in the gauge cluster area, you'll have another harness that has to be fished through the dash and connect to the back side of it. But overall, it's not that hard. I'll see what I've, I can get you some video of it. So before I actually set everything up, I want to show you what I was talking about. Now would be a really good time to clean your windshield. Mine's just dirty on the outside, but this would be the two connectors that go to your rate or to your gauge cluster. This one is for your clock and trip. This wire over here, that is for your keyless entry module. And of course the yellow wire at the bottom goes to your airbag. Now, once you actually get it in, like this goes to the cubby hole right in front of your shifter. That has to, there's a plug on it that has to get connected in. And there should be another wire over here, which is this one. That is for your glove box light. So it's not very hard. It's, it is a little more difficult doing it by yourself, but I'll see if I can post up and I'll show you. So I tried to do a time lapse, but it's kind of hard when you don't have a tripod. So I'm going to show you some of the mounting points of where to attach the dash, dash to the brace. There's a screw there, screw there. There's the harness. Like I said, it clips to the, the metal skeleton of the dash. But you are going to have to fish the wire through a little bit. So up under here, if you can see it, those two right there, those are 10 millimeters. That is what holds the airbag to the dash skeleton. So, um, before I go much further, there's a screw there, a screw there. This is your center um, cubby hole and dash vents. So, I'm gonna put two more over there, finish putting the pillar on. The pillar just slides down in the dash. There's two like little legs there's a green clip roughly in here and then there's a metal one up here that you got to be careful not to break it's kind of a pain to get out but i'm gonna do a little more and then uh i'll take another video all right i'm to the point of putting the gauge cluster back into the dash uh, before i do that i'm going to show you a couple more screws where they go but um when you put this back in you have to put that screw in and i'm not going to show you on film doing this because it's probably going to be really difficult but there's one and there's one and it's up underneath the dash. It's, you kind of have to go through the steering column, but there's a screw, there's a screw and there's two. So that's pretty much what holds the top half in. You got two on each corner, two behind the cluster, two behind the trip gauge. And then you have one that holds the radio bracket to a metal frame that goes down there. So let me get the cluster in. I'm probably gonna pop the center stack in and then I'll take some more film. All right, so I got a little bit more done. Um, I'm gonna try to show you the screws under the dash. It's gonna be pretty difficult, but so there's one up here and I'm gonna, I have to crawl under the dash for the other two. This piece of course just clips in there's no screws or anything holding that in. Um, there's a harness. The thing I did notice with this, um, mine was actually broke out of my 09. I had to borrow it from the 05 parts car. And for some reason, the 05 had a light up underneath there. My 2009 did not. 
not that it really matters it's just I don't know if you can see it back there it's all the way in the back but either way so after you get that I'm gonna show you where the so the other two screws see if we can see it there's one right there that is literally underneath the steering column and then I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it with all this crap on the way no you can't but the other one's back between this harness here you have to have a really long screwdriver like that in order to get it but um, so now I'm gonna finish putting the radio in and probably the lower kick panels I'm um, not gonna do the or the passenger side yet uh, my fan squeaks in this one, so I have a parts car and the fan's free. I already paid for it, so I'm going to swap that over. But uh, I'll finish doing this side, and then I'll, I'll post a video. So I wanted to take a video of a little bit more that I've gotten done. Um, gotten the steering wheel back on and the airbag plugged in. Uh, I cleaned everything behind the wheel because, you know, an older car. Uh, I got the radio all plugged in and now I'm going to try to work on the bottom kick panel and underneath. Uh, now this car had, a, I think it was a tracking device on it, so I'm going to use the, it's a plate that goes underneath where your toes go that actually holds the OBD2 port in. I'm going to use that from the other car because for whatever reason they didn't plug it back in in mine. So my goal is just to get this side done. Like I said, I'll do another video, probably one more video on the other side of the blower motor and the rest of the dash. And the interior's done in this car. Gets one last good armor all down and windexed again and then everything scrubbed and it should be done. So last video, I never recorded the other side, but as you can hear, heat shields are rattling, but still needs cleaned up. But I went over it real quick one last time, but. It is all the way back together. Now, again, I still have a TPMS light, but there's no check engine light. Center stack works. Actually, I'd like to check this too. Because mine made noise. And this one doesn't. some scratches from whoever but compared to the dash it was chewed on this is so much better I got my fiance's 2019 Forrester mats in here I still need to fix this and there's padding on the back that still needs fixed but overall it runs it needs a battery severely but once I park it almost stalled the battery is cooked nope nothing all right so anyway in case anybody didn't see the original dash and why I replaced it let me go show you it I swapped the airbags from my dash over I don't know if it's a different airbag or not but I didn't want to deal with the code so this is the original dash that came out of this car apparently they have issues with them being sticky and melting and there was a recall that Subaru had I guess this car never was done, but this was, I don't know if they're children or dogs, but that's why I got one of So, now that the interior is finished, next update is going to be on the front end. I, uh, I'm actually going to show you the parts car real quick. 
we're going to be taking the hood. I really don't want to use the GT hood, but it needs painted. I'm going to be stealing the hood, the radiator, the condenser, the rad support. That's probably it. I'm probably going to sell everything else I can off this. But it is a GT. It's got an upgraded intercooler. Fortunately, this battery's dead too. I'm going to see if I can use the front portion of that air box, which should work with mine since it got crushed in the rack. But this has body damage and rust. But this is what this thing looks like now since I tore the dash and steering wheel out. So, stay tuned.